common question I get asked is how can I make my progressions not sound dry? Here's some tips you can use to transform a boring chord progression into something that doesn't put you to sleep and makes you want to share with the world. I like to use these same tips when I feel like I need to give my music more character. The first one is inspect the melody. Sometimes a progression can sound 10 times better just from playing a better melody. Now if the song calls for it, playing a better melody can make all the difference. Now let's say we're in the key of F major. And let's say my melody is... Now if I was to add on some chords to that, let's say I got... Now that sounds okay but it can be improved. It kind of feels dry. It doesn't feel like the progression is going anywhere. So what if instead we change the melody? So instead of doing, what if instead I did, now if I was to add in those chords I was originally playing to this new melody, now I got something like, Just from changing the melody, it made the progression sound 10 times better. And all I really did was I just added in a couple of extra notes in between the main chords. A question I like to use when I'm deciding if I should change the melody is, does it feel like enough? Does it feel like there's more that can be added to it? And if it doesn't feel like enough, then I go into this exploratory phase where I try out different melodies. By doing this, a feedback loop is created. So if it doesn't feel right, then I tweak the melody and I just keep tweaking it until I get to a point where I feel satisfied with where the melody is at. And then I add on chords into that. We went from to and all I did was I just changed the melody that made the progression sound 10 times better. So that's the first tip, inspect the melody. The second tip is add chord extensions. Extensions are extremely useful because it can allow your chords to have more color and fullness, but it can also allow you to create these harmonically complex sounds. Extensions are just the tones extended past the seven. If I'm in the key of C major, my C major scale would be now, if I was to count these notes, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if I was to extend past this scale and keep counting, I have eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. The extended tones in any key would be the ninth, 11th, and 13th. In the context of C major, the ninth would be D, the 11th would be F, and then the 13th would be a. If I had this chord progression, let's say I have like a G minor 7, and then an A minor 7, and then a D minor chord. Like it sounds okay, but if it feels like I can add more to it, I can add more notes to it. So instead of playing this G minor 7 chord, what if instead I wanted to play like a G minor 9? The ninth in the in the G major scale would be A. So this is a G minor 9. Now the next chord is A minor 7. Let's say instead of playing that, I want to play a A minor 9. The ninth in the A major scale would be B. And then instead of playing this D minor chord, what if instead I wanted to play a D minor 11? I like to voice the D minor 11 chord like this. That's one of the ways I like to voice it. So we have the 1, we have the 5, we have the nine, there's that extended tone. We have the flat three, we have the 11th, and then we have the flat seven. So all together we have we went from to The chords are still functioning the same. We didn't change the overall function of the chords. We just extended out the chord. We made the chord sound more full. We gave it more texture. We gave it more, just more character to it. And we did that by adding in chord extensions. So we went to 
The third tip is create space. I'm constantly asking myself, how can I do more with less? There was a core progression that I shared on social media a while back and it kind of took off. Like a lot of people were feeling it and it just created like this magical moment. We're gonna talk about why it was so special and why it just kind of worked. So it sounds like this. That's the whole progression. I'm not playing some harmonically crazy chords. I'm just focused on allowing the chords to just fill up whatever space that they're in. I'm giving the listener a chance to really feel something. And that's the magic of creating space in your progressions. Now, one of the reasons why I really like this tip is because you don't have to change what you're playing. You just change how you're playing it, right? So I could have played this progression a lot faster or I could have added a lot of extra stuff in between chords but instead of doing that I was just focused on just letting the chords breathe that is one of the special things in that progression and it's something that you can utilize in your progressions as well there was something else i did in this progression that made it feel special but more on that in a second the fourth tip is add passing chords now passing chords are just chords that allow you to connect other chords together they're not the most important chords in your progression but they can allow you to create these interesting harmonic choices for this video, let's just talk about one particular type of passing chord, and that's the chromatic passing chord. Now these chords can be used a half step uh, above or below your target chord. Now if we were to go back to one of our early examples where we did this G minor nine, A minor nine, D minor 11. Now let's say my D minor 11 is my target chord, but before that chord, I wanna insert a chromatic passing chord. Now in order to do that, I would need to play the chord, this same chord that is a half step below or above it. So I'm gonna do a half step above it and that would be an E flat minor 11. And then I'm gonna go to that D minor 11. So instead of doing a half, really like using chromatic passing chords in my progression because it can just give it a little bit more personality. Now the key with this is you don't want to do it too much in your progressions. It can make your progression sound predictable which leads me to my final point of do the unpredictable. There's a lot of ways you can be unpredictable but for this video we're just going to talk about non-diatonic harmony. That's just a fancy way of saying chords outside the key. A question I like to ask myself is if I'm in this key how can I naturally play chords that have a couple of notes that's outside the key? If we were to go back to that earlier example where I played. I'm in the key of B flat major. That scale is. We have a couple of notes outside that scale. We have. All those notes are outside the B flat major scale. So if I were to play any of those notes in a chord, I'm playing a non-diatonic chord. So I'm kind of like doing the unpredictable by adding those notes in there. This first chord is diatonic because all those notes are in the B flat major scale. The second chord is, this is another diatonic chord. All this feels okay. Now when I get to this third chord, I did the unpredictable because I, this note right here and this note are not in the B flat major scale. So when you hear it, it's like, oh, okay, this, this is different. I wasn't expecting that. And then this fourth chord is a diatonic chord. So in real time, when you hear it,
So this third chord, this chord right here, this non-diatonic chord, it allowed me to do the unpredictable. Once again, I'm not playing some crazy chords, but I'm playing a chord outside the key. And by doing that, it allows the listener to kind of say, oh, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Like that actually sounds pretty good. So you might be thinking, how did you know to use that chord? I knew I wanted to keep the melody D, like that melody is constant throughout the entire progression. So I wanted to keep the melody D. I want the bass to be something outside the key. I had a couple of options I had. So I said, all right, what if the bass is this note? I mean, I have a couple of options that I could play that led me to that chord. Behind every boring progression is a much better one that you have yet to explore. You don't have to use all the tips I shared in this video. Sometimes all you need is that one thing that can create huge improvements in what you already have. You just have to be willing to try things out and figure out what works and what doesn't. Now go have fun creating progressions that you can share with the world.